Now that we're a bit more familiar with Cassandra, let's have a look at some node issues that are likely to surface in your production environment. So we'll just label this section node issues. And by no means are these a comprehensive set of problems that will occur. However, in all likelihood, some of them may occur and perhaps it'll help you to build your confidence with respect to handling such situations. So we know that Cassandra is a cluster oriented distributed database system, which is fault tolerant and uses basically a peer to peer system, which means no one's a master, no one's a slave, data are replicated as per your replication factor or whatever topology or strategy is selected such as simple or network topology. Whatever your configuration happens to be, you'll invariably replicate your data across one or more nodes, making it redundant. However, things do crop up. So let's set out some tasks. One, before we begin with some simulations such as downing one or more nodes, let's try to determine where our key space happens to be replicated throughout the cluster. So let's confirm which two nodes, and again, this is because of the replication factor currently set to two, house the web app one key space. And this is where we get to use node tool, for example. Now let's just confirm what this all means. We'll use SQL shell, and once in, we'll describe the key space web app one. This will tell us or confirm that the rec replication factor is two. And also it'll tell us the primary key, which is the key that's referenced the node tool to determine where the key happens to be distributed or the keys happen to be distributed throughout the cluster. So let's, with that said, navigate into the Cassandra tree and execute an instance of SQL shell. Let's describe the key space, no viable alternative at input description. Let's go ahead and And now when we look at the key space, we see that replication factor is two. And in addition for the table users, our lone simple table with meaningless data at this particular point has a primary key that's a single column value of username. So this becomes important because as we search for the distribution throughout the cluster, we'll need the column family information along with the primary key for that table, for that particular table or repository within the key space. So let's just change this to disk and let's just know what this in effect gives us. So this tells us basically Replication factor, which we already know, but or new, but it helps to confirm it, as well as primary key for use with the node tool utility, which will reveal to us the location of the cluster. Now that we know that information, let's use node tool. And there's an option get endpoints, which will help us to determine where things are located. So let's execute node tool and take a look at the help for a moment. We'll grep, for example, endpoints actually at the end, so that's easy to follow. So in search for key space distribution throughout your ring, your Cassandra ring, we use the get endpoints command. So node tool, get endpoints, followed by the key space, which for us is simply called web app one. But it doesn't end there. That doesn't give you any information. You do need to continue and specify the column family as column families could be distributed on various nodes. So the column family for us is simply users and the key for the users table or column family is simply username. And in a composite sense or composite configuration, you can use either of the composite primary keys to search for the distribution throughout the cluster. So this will tell us what we want to know. So reveals cluster distribution of keys within the key space, of course. So let's see what comes back. This will show us the two nodes as per the replication factor. 
So as it has it, it's 120 and 122. So that amounts to sent one and sent three, skipping two, Ubu serves three, two, and one. So our data for this particular table users happen to be spread on these two nodes. With a rep factor of two, that means we can query either of them. And so long as our quorum is set, or we use a consistency of one, we should be able to return, or two, we should be able to return data. So let's just confirm our ability to return data before moving on and failing matters. So now, confirm data accessibility via, of course, SQL shell. So we know it's on those two nodes, and we can pick arbitrarily because any node, again, note, any node in the ring functions as a coordinator especially in the simple topology that we're using, which relegates everything to one data center. So that means for us, we can simply perform a query within SQL shell. So SQL shell, and once in, we can check the consistency. Let's say we set it to quorum, which means one less, which means, of course, that should result in, and rounded down, so that should result in two. So that's going to be two divided by or the replication factor divided by two plus one rounded down. So let's see what comes back when we do this little we'll SQL shell again. And this is on this node, which does not contain the data by any, by the way. And then once in, let's have a quick look at the consistency, which defaults as we know to one, which means any node who responds is fine. So let's go ahead and set the consistency to quorum which for our configuration should be two. And then let's select star from webapp1.users, which is a fully qualified way of specifying the query no differently than with, let's say, a traditional RDBMS. So this should query it and come back with all of our records that we've updated recently. Again, our data are meaningless, but that's not the point. It's besides the point. Username happens to be the key. We know it's distributed across those two nodes. It took the coordinator a little bit to contact both nodes and so far as consistency level is concerned. Now, what if the consistency level were set to a higher value? Let's say three with a rep factor of two. So it's set to three. Let's see what happens as we try to query from the wire. Well, of course, not enough nodes are available. So this is a condition that could generate a problem for you if your coders or developers are referencing an incorrect number of consistency. So let's just correct this here. So consistency quorum followed by select star from web app one dot users returns results so long as quorum is met which in this case is equal to two that's not a problem so rep factor divided by two plus one rounded down if decimal that's not a problem however another condition so the data are accessible insofar as quorum and one are concerned so certainly at the default level of one it works so let's just note as well consistency one followed by a select star will result in return values so let's just copy this and put that into the fold with double ampersand to indicate that that's what's performed next. So we select star from web app users one and return results as long as quorum is met, which in this case happens to be one, no problems there. But what happens if you up the quorum? So now set quorum equals three and test resolution. And of course this fails as client, which in this case happens to be SQL shell, but could be your front end tool cannot meet quorum requirements. And that should come as no supply, surprise. So that's something to keep in mind. Now let's just note that, again, it seems trivial. However, this condition could be met if one or more front end code points, let's say PHP, Python, Ruby, SQL shell incorrectly indicate core levels. So that could be a problem. 
Now, so long as you set it to an appropriate value, you should be able to get results. Let's do a consistency quorum again. And select star, this will come back with results. This is the coordinator node. It fetches it across the wire. And so long as the two nodes are up that contain the data, the key space 120, 122, quorum will work. That should not be an issue whatsoever. Now, another condition that could certainly occur for one or more reasons. Let's say we down one of the two nodes housing the key space web app one. So to down it, well, we could decommission, we could simply kill it. Perhaps the easiest way is to kill it. So control C on node to kill foreground process. And of course, if it's behind the scenes, you could kill the PID or use node tool to decommission it or to remove it in the event that let's say you're upgrading or performing some other step. So let's say we take off 120, which is sent one by using a control C to kill it. That'll kill that instance. And of course we should be able to confirm from the shell. Let's say we quit this instance momentarily and execute a node tool status where we'll see that 120 is down. So one of the two nodes are down. Now again, if we do node tool, get endpoints, we should see that the data is still distributed to 120 and 122 with 120 currently in a down state. So how does it impact our queries? As again, we should expect that quorum should fail. So down one of the two nodes and now attempt various queries or attempt, let's say, query at various core levels. So of course, that's just a matter of consistency. Let's say perhaps quorum initially, so quorum followed by other options. So maybe we'll just bracket this and make it quorum, which is two, which will fail, then one, which will work. So let's see what happens when we SQL shell back and check our consistency The default is one. And let's set it to quorum and then attempt to select star from that space. And of course, we're not able to meet it. So any client, any front end should generate an error that resembles something along these lines in the event that the level is set to quorum. And that's a likely scenario in the event that a particular node is down in the ring. So in this particular configuration, the key space web app one and its column family users happen to be distributed to sense one and three as opposed to ubu serves one two and three or sent two so we've down sent one maintained a quorum level of say quorum or consistency level of quorum which fails because that should equal to two and as a consequence our data will not be returned now setting consistency to one fixes matters certainly what does this mean from a code perspective it essentially means that you should have some sort of handler in your code which perhaps defaults to a level that is amenable for the situation. So let's just note this condition could cause, and this condition means simply, of course, quorum fails, could cause you to code a handler such as if quorum is unmet, then perhaps set consistency level. So for example, to one. So i.e. if perhaps a not quorum, so something along the lines of not quorum, perhaps we set maybe a variable quorum equal to one and then retry query, which means we could receive compromised results. However, in our case, that might suffice for the application to keep it humming along until we determine what's happening. And again, if we're using tools such as Nagios and perhaps Datastax as op center, we should be able to determine the failure of one or more nodes. Now, another idea that comes to mind is if you have a cluster of n number of nodes, in our case six, then why not replicate more so than two, maybe three or four? Because the more you replicate, the lower the probability 
of problems accessing data. So note, since our cluster contains six nodes, it is ideal to replicate to most, if not all. Now, of course, there's the argument surrounding data storage requirements as your tables grow. We have an insignificant data here. However, supposing these data were significant and amounted to maybe gigabytes, terabytes, or petabytes worth of information, then certainly the distribution across all members of the node will or all members of the cluster will require that each node has an ample amount of storage to support the data load. So it may be less than ideal to use all of the nodes of a cluster equally. You're essentially mirroring data, which means redundant storage, double storage, so you lose the ability to scale in a linear fashion. However, it's a trade-off between scaling linearly in terms of storage and accessibility and availability and having that high availability and accessibility. So you should be concerned with propagating your information to a balanced number of nodes to withstand n number of failed nodes. Whatever n is, is your comfort point. So maybe for us, six nodes are in the cluster. Maybe four nodes should have our data set for our various key spaces to sustain more failures. So again, this is a real situation that you may encounter in the event. Now, let's go ahead and update our configuration. So let's update the replication factor to three and then test failure. So we've done something like this. You can do it through SQL shell, certainly through command CLI or Cassandra CLI, the command line interface. And if we do an alter key space, for example, the name of our simple key space is web app one, and we can tab everything out, but ultimately it'll give us something along the lines of with, with features such as replication. And in between curly braces, a number of options such as the class to use, which for us will be simple strategy for now because this relegates everything to one data center so we need not worry about uh, portioning our data accordingly and a replication factor let's say of three and obviously we know this will up matter so the presumption here is that we have added more nodes to the cluster and we'd like to make our data more fault tolerant so it's currently set. Let's do a description again. So that should be somewhere in the history. And let's find that through. It's currently set to two. That means two nodes. And of course, from the shell, node tool get endpoints reveals two nodes. So let's go ahead and stretch this a bit. Now let's take a quick look at it again. So now it's set to three. This will cause changes to occur on the various standard outs or in the log files if you're following your log files to indicate that data are replicated accordingly. Now we still have one down node, but one node still has the results, so information will be replicated accordingly. Now let's quit temporarily and have a quick look at the endpoints that are involved. So now it's 120, 121, 122. So that means since one, two, and three with two being down. So now as it currently stands, quorum should work. That should be our next test because now the data should live on two nodes out of the three although the replication factor is three, but we should be at least able to meet the quorum level. So let's just confirm that as well. So now that we've extended the cluster and we've upped the replication factor, confirm consistency equals quorum. Again, to simulate a production environment, what's likely to happen is you as the administrator may add virtual or and or physical nodes to your Cassandra cluster, unbeknownst to the developer community, and perhaps you instruct them to alter the key spaces, or perhaps you do it on behalf of them to ensure availability of your data. So let's go ahead and confirm this by launching SQL Shell again. And once in, let's go ahead and set consistency to quorum, and that should be somewhere here, and then go ahead and select star from the space once again and this should now be set to replication factor 3 divided by 2 is 1.5 plus 1 2.5 rounded down is still 2 so now we have the ability to survive two nodes 
or in the ability in this case with one node being down. So replication factor three, it's putting the data on sense one, two, and three, and quorum means two need to be available. Well, currently one and three are available, two is not, that's fine, it suffices. Now at this point, if we down either of the nodes, let's say sense two or three, it's one that's down actually, two or three, then quorum should fail. So let's down three. So now one and three are down, and let's confirm at the quorum level. And of course it fails, but one will work, just to be clear. So as we up it, not a problem. We just have a condition or a handler in our code which looks out for this. Now let's set the consistency back to quorum and bring these nodes back up. So we'll fire up these. And we tend to ideally stagger or introduce spacing in between the firing up of nodes as it taxes the network, it taxes the seeds, it taxes in general because of the gossip protocol and its communication. So we wait for one before we fire up the other one. And as soon as we see on, let's say, this one, that it is listening for thrift clients, then we should be able to find it. And of course, from this node, we can always do a Cassandra status to see, or node tool status to see Cassandra status. So we should see currently whatever nodes happen to be down 120 and 122. Let's see on the first one. This one still is down. It's not up yet, and that's why it still reflects. Let's take a look once more. And now it's just one node that's down, so that means, of course, SQL shell with consistency quorum should work with a select. And that's going to work with two in that particular case. But currently our data are still spread to perhaps a less than ideal number of nodes it's spread to three one two and three what would be ideal let's take a look again at the formula so replication factor is set to three and we know that quorum is equal to your rep factor which for us now is three divided by two plus one and then rounded down to the nearest whole number so in the case of rep factor 3 divided by 2 plus 1 plus the rounded down, we get 2.5 rounded down is 2. So what happens if we up it to 4 plus two, divided by 2 plus 1? So we get 2 plus 1, 3. So now we get a level of 3 to satisfy the quorum. So if our rep factor is four, now invariably one of these nodes will be introduced, either three, two, or one. Four nodes will have the data. The likelihood of four nodes going down is certainly less likely. So let's go ahead and up that again. And let's just say for seven, we update replication factor to four. So we've started with a simple replication factor of one, then moved upwards because in all likelihood, you'll initially plan your cluster with n number of nodes, and n should grow, whether virtual or physical, is besides the point. And as you grow, you'll have to consider, or as you extend the cluster horizontally, you'll have to consider the configurations associated with the key spaces. And then, of course, as you extend across data centers, then you'll shift the topologies associated with your key spaces accordingly. So let's find that update or that alter statement which updates the key space to a rep factor of four. So now four nodes will contain the data. Let's quit and we can confirm it by of course describing the key space. Just always confirm. So let's say we do a web app one here rep factor is set to four. So just like that, let's take a look at where the data should be and it includes 112. 112 as we know, let's take a quick look at the graphic, is Ubu serves three. So these four of the ring now are responsible for our meaningless key space, web app one. So the likelihood again of the four being down, unless they're all tied virtually to one physical node, is less than likely. And even in that case with virtualization, VMware, Red Hat virtualization, KVM, etc., it's still unlikely, even with a host system, that all four nodes will be down. Insofar as querying, again, let's go ahead and do a SQL shell, consistency quorum, and let's do a select star and see what comes back. This will expect one level down. Let's take a look to see what quorum should be in four. That's three. As long as three are up, we're good. So we've got Ubu serves three. That's 112. It's up. And the three CentOS boxes. And as we can see, this one's down. And of course, node tool from this node should reflect that sent 
three is currently down. Let's just take a quick look at that as it gets the status information from the Cassandra ring. And let's take a little bit to fetch the information. Let's see if we're faster on this side. And this comes back quicker, noting that 122 is down. Let's just go on with send three. It's taking a while to figure it out. So eventually we'll get some sort of response. It's not able to connect locally. Let's do a node tool. Let's see if it's able to connect to maybe the host 192.168.75.110 to get the status information. And it's refused there, maybe 112, nothing there either. So it's not talking that could be network related. And this is going to try 120, nothing there. So locally, it's a, and again, normally you'd run this locally. So that's why we're getting some problems there. But nonetheless, let's fire this node back up. And that'll get us all four nodes of the ring. And if we arbitrarily drop two of the other ones, we'll fail the quorum. So let's say we drop UbuServe 3 and then maybe sent one, leaving sent two and three up. So as far as our ring is concerned, the key space is replicated across these. However, two are down, and we should see how the replication behaves. So the two that are down are sent one and UbuServe three, making the quorum in jeopardy or placing the quorum in jeopardy. So let's connect the SQL shell again, set the consistency of quorum, and then try to select. Just to be sure, setting quorum or consistency, let's say to two now. Two nodes are certainly up. Let's see if we can select from two and have them agree. And this should pull from the two nodes, no problems there. And certainly one will work if two works. And that's going to make the query. And that comes back quicker because fewer comparisons need to be made. So these are some of the things you are constantly juggling with when managing any type of cluster for that matter, let alone Cassandra. It's a question of availability, distribution, peer-to-peer -peer communication, so on and so forth. So test various, let's say, scenarios, such as two nodes being down. And let's just know at this point, quorum is equal to three. So anything less will fail quorum, which means you'll have to have a handler, which may be two in this particular case, if you know the data should live at least on three nodes or should be accessible on three nodes. Again, downtime is usually restricted as you scale horizontally, so it should not be a problem as far as it's concerned. Now, if a node's offline for too long, sometimes you'll need to execute a node tool repair just to be sure that inconsistencies are fixed. So let's just reiterate that. If any of the downed nodes are down for too long, and that's usually, for example, within the hinted handoff space, for example, a node tool repair is usually necessary to rectify inconsistencies. You're basically reboot strapping, if you will, the various nodes that have been offline for too long to ensure that you don't persist inconsistencies across those nodes. Another thing is that if a node is also offline for too long, you should consider ensuring time or NTP synchronization because sometimes when a node is offline for too long, it falls out of time sync, which certainly yields problems insofar as replication information because if the timestamp is too far into the future, for example, its replica may be considered the valid replica or the most up-to-date replica, which can certainly be a problem. One other scenario that could be problematic, and there's certainly many others, but another that comes to mind off the cuff is, for example, what if all nodes of a replica are down? This is certainly a problem. It is not likely as you scale horizontally, but it certainly is possible. So for us, that's going to be, of course, UbuServe 3, Senos 1 through 3. So killing each of these instances brings down the replication of the web app 1 key space. Let's just dump UbuServe 3 as well. So that means resolution for the key space will fail. You may have other key spaces that are replicated, let's say, to the other nodes. Let's take a look at the status. We should show the majority being down. And momentarily, this will update to reflect UbuServe 3 as well, which is 112. It's actually reflected. So we've got 
one, two, three, and we're missing one. That should be 121. Let's just double check that. It should be sent two. And it's actually noticed, as you can see, 120, 122. So sent one, sent three, and UbuServe three is down. So now they're all down. Let's just confirm it again. Four are down, two are up. But our data is still distributed, the key space that is, to those four nodes, 120, 122, 121, the sent boxes, and UbuServe 3, the final Ubuntu box. So now our queries will fail. So if we SQL shell, which still connects the local node, which is up, it'll fail. So let's go ahead and SQL shell again. Consistency by default is set to one. So any one node who responds is sufficient. And we search, it dumps. What if we describe, for example, key spaces that exist on the system? Well. All nodes know of the key space, but all nodes do not maintain data for the key space unless the rep factor is set to all nodes. So this is a problem scenario. You won't be able to query it. No matter which host you connect to, it will be a problem. So UbuServe's 1 and 2 are up, but it will still yield a failure. So let's just go ahead and note that. So down all nodes for the replica of key space equal web app one and then of course attempt queries at various core levels now let's just know of course this results invariably in failure so some options exist you could for example decommission remove nodes which will reassign tokens to existing nodes that's one way to get out of this problem if you're in an emergency situation the other way is to bring up one or more of the nodes. The wider your replication, the less the probability or the likelihood. So the wider, of course, it's all about horizontal scaling. The replication, the less likely this scenario. But this scenario certainly will, re will result in data being accessible. It's tantamount essentially to your clustered traditional RDBMS failing all nodes. So if you've got a replica across four nodes and they're all down, then you have serious application problems. But there is a way to bail out. You could decommission, move, move tokens. So for example, you could remove one or more nodes and reassign existing tokens to survive nodes all using of course node tool this is a way to do it while you fix the down systems but again this is a rare occurrence so let's just note this is an unlikely scenario especially as you scale wide so the likelihood of this happening is really unlikely so ideally Problems usually surround replication factor, core levels that are set in your code for accessing data, whether or not nodes are accessible, and so on. So long as you have a balanced approach, maybe a rep factor of three or higher, and consistency at quorum with a condition to catch maybe less than quorum, then you should escape most situations. So those are just some node issues that may occur. Again, if you're offline for too long, you should run node tool repair. Sometimes you may even want to drain a host altogether and rejoin the ring having new tokens assigned and data distributed accordingly. But as long as your nodes are down, your data will be, become unavailable. And as far as the ring is concerned, the two nodes that have survived, they still believe that these four nodes are responsible ultimately for the key space. And as a consequence, we'll wait for one or more of them to resurrect to continue serving data. So let's bring these nodes back up. So we'll go with each of these. Usually we add some spacing, but since it's a classroom setting, we can fire them up a little bit quicker in production. Just add some spacing, a couple minutes between each to ensure that they come up sans problem. So those are just some issues you might encounter. There's certainly many more, but you can bail out of some of these issues if necessary.